from some journalist so extension has come and by 8.15 or something a runner came from Mantale delivered the order and the municipal commissioner who had technically retired was given an extension. Extension cannot be given to a person who is retired. He can only be reappointed and this being an IS Kada post he couldn't have been reappointed. Anyway, this is a long story. Now the thing comes to the election commission, state election commission. State election commission also we had made a representation and ultimately they came with the conclusion that the extension was not correct and they said we are going to issue a warning to today's there in the Indian Express and a little bit of theirs in Times of India also. They said we are going to issue a leave, uh, this thing, a warning to the state government. You have done a wrong, but don't repeat the mistake. Now, <laughs> Mr. Subodh Kumar will be there for the next elections and whether they repeat. Anyway, uh, somebody then uh, somebody asked that uh, why you are not asking him to go. He said, she said, Neela Satnayan election commissioner, I do not have powers to kick him out. Then the only thing which I want to say is that under the law, state election commissioner is empowered to take any decision which will ensure free and fair elections. This is what central that India's election commission has been doing. They also could have done. But the irony is that where she didn't have any power to issue a warning for coming out with an admonition, when there is no power for admonition, censure or warning, she says she has powers and she has issued it. But where she has powers to cancel the, amend the extension, she says, I don't have powers. So this is where how the law operates in India. This is where the accountability system is that municipal commissioner who gets an illegal extension when the elections are done, no accountability. The Babus in Mantrale who have violated the law conspicuously, consciously, in order to favor the Congress government in the elections, no, 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 no accountability. Delhi, 8 o'clock in the night, what happened in the PM office, don't, nobody knows. Because they are supposed to function as per the procedures. Extension came, no accountability. State election commissioner, uh, she thinks that, uh, okay, she is above God. And uh, no, nothing can happen because under the act she has been given the same, she cannot be removed from her thing the way unless until she is impeached in the, in the parliament or in the state legislative parliament. That the High Court judge procedures required to be followed. And this is how now accountability, accountability, accountability everywhere is there. But this specific thing is not there at all. So I think uh, there are lots of panelists who are required to uh, put forward their thoughts into it. But this is something which uh, I am trying to, for you all to ponder over and think how the country would go ahead. Thank you. I invite Mr. Nitai Mehta. Uh, I'm sure all of us know uh, his reports have been making a lot of people uneasy in BMC or even in the government. Uh, taking this initiative, uh, I'd like to start off with uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Singh said, the accountability. It's a beautiful word, it's a very romantic word when we talk about accountability, but what is actually accountability? And how does it, how is it relevant as far as we are concerned in the municipal elections and after the municipal elections. Uh, that is an important issue that uh, I think civil society should really be looking at and <coughs> thinking about because uh, whether it is a manifesto or promises made from a stage, uh, as Mr. Singh said, it cannot be challenged in the court of law. It is a promise that has been made. It's not a contract that has been signed by the uh, political party to the citizens. Uh, that's not there in our constitution. But the thing is that what civil society and what we and Praja are doing is at least coming out with a mirror in which the elected representatives can see themselves of what they are doing. The idea is that as uh, what Raja has developed in the last few years is to see what is happening at the grassroots level vis-a-vis uh, -vis each issue that the municipal corporation or the government needs to really look at. So whether it is crime, whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is civic issues like water supply or drainage or garbage, we take all those issues take what's happening at the grassroots level and present it to the elected representatives and the government as well as the citizens at large. Uh, this is the mirror that we want to show to society and the elected representatives
experience what's happening. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, we have the Municipal Corporation of Mumbai uh, runs the education program which has a budget of over 2,000 crores. Nearly 4 lakh 50,000 children go into municipal schools and uh, you know study there. But you'll be surprised to know that if 100 children enter the first standard in municipal schools, hardly 9 pass out from the 10th standard. And we talk about accountability, this is what it is. The accountability that you're spending 2,000 crores, nearly 40,000 rupees per child against uh, you know, your spending, which is a very high rate. I mean, uh, if you go to regular private schools, they don't even charge so much of 40, 000, as much as 40,000 rupees per child. And we continue spending that without any accountability, without any understanding that this money is just going down the drain. This is money that you and me have paid by taxes, taxes like Octroy, taxes that even if you buy a box of matches, money is taken out of that and put into a fund for education. Uh, the other thing is health. We, Muslim Corporation again has a budget of over 1700 crores for health and you are seeing data, in fact I think you are seeing data that is uh, official data and data that is actually coming out be completely different. For example, you look at malaria, that is a thing that is curable, but you have seen the over 250% increase in deaths due to malaria in Mumbai in the last three years. Why is it that there is no accountability or no questioning of the system in the last many years on why this cannot be controlled? Whether it is malaria, tuberculosis, diarrhea, water supply, these are examples of things that are happening in our city and most of the times we, all of us, and in fact the civil society is also to blame, we take up issues that are, it's important but we are only taking up issues that are firefighting issues. There is a fire, let's run there, let's try to stop that fire. But the issue, why does the fire come up in the first place is because you are not taking care of issues that are important, they may sound small at the moment but they always come up and blow up in our faces. Like malaria is going to blow up in our faces in the next coming years. Tuberculosis is something that is already blown up in our faces. We already have strains of tuberculosis that are not curable. I mean, that's what the government has been saying. So, what the role that Raja wants to play, and I think what we should be trying to do out here is trying to look at these issues that really affect the people and the common man. A uh, lot of the political parties talk about you know, their greatest icon is the common man, Aam Aadmi. Look after the Aam Aadmi. Look after their needs. Look after the issue that is near to them. And you will be able to make, you will deliver much more. Uh, it's okay to say that I am going to you know, have a dam built for water. Uh, you know, I spent 10,000 crores or have the uh, you know, coastal roads coming up or the large uh, 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 projects coming up. The point is that these are small issues that we are ignoring out here. Uh, the other thing which uh, Praja has also been following very regularly is uh, after the elected representatives are elected, what are they really going and doing? Uh, and as far as the last municipal uh, uh, section or corporate is concerned, you will be surprised to know that they hardly ever ask any, raise any issues and questions while they were in the board committees or in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the general body meetings of municipal corporation. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the ward committee meeting, which is one of the most important committees as far as municipal corporation is concerned, the average question asked by municipal corporation in one year has been two. That means if they've had 17 meetings in the ward, on an average there are seven to eight corporators in each ward. They've asked only two questions. I mean, that sounds a little ridiculous, but that's the fact. That's what's happening in the our municipal corporators in the previous session. This is the way they have been performing. And this is the report that Raja is bringing out. Uh, but another point as far as questions are concerned, I want to present in front of you all was the issue of even the types of questions. They were, the most important question that they ever wrote was change of name of roads. I think that's the only problem in Mumbai that we have, that you have to change the name of roads. And there's no other problem. So as far as Praja is concerned, I'd like to say that we will be continuously showing the mirror to the municipal corporators citizens, civil society, political parties on what is happening at the grassroots level. We will be urging you, cooperating with you, partnering you in trying to find solutions for these issues and we really like you to take these issues forward as political parties, as people who have representatives in the house. Uh, we also have started one small project uh, uh, in the last one year. We have started rating and ranking the performance of the elected representatives. 
Uh, we came out with a report card on the performance of the MLAs uh, in November. We'll be doing that every year. And that will literally show you a mirror of what, how you are performing and what work you are doing. Thank you. This is Kulkarni to speak. Good evening, friends, and thank you to Lok Sattha for inviting the panelists here and I am very happy to see that those chairs have also got filled up. Okay, because I was wondering whether there was going to be nobody sitting in those chairs. So I am happy to see that those uh, chairs have also got filled up. Uh, you know, everybody talks about accountability, accountability and more accountability, but there is something that goes before accountability and that's transparency. If you are not transparent, I don't know how you can be held accountable. So the first step to all, or the first question to all of you who are sitting on the other side is how transparent is your corporator going to be? Then we will see how accountable he is after the elections, okay? So let's first see how transparent he is going to be. Um, as part of election watch, ADR and Agni, both are political NGOs, as you know, are going to be studying the affidavits which are available to us. Most political parties don't like the fact that they have to sign affidavits because they have to give their source of income, they have to give criminal record of any educational qualification, source of income, etc., etc. But with the High Court order, they don't have a choice. They have to give those affidavits. Even as we speak now at 4.30, uh, people have gone from the ADR and Agni office to get these affidavits which have been made available to us, thanks to Mr. Asim Gupta. Okay, um, once these affidavits are made available to us, because it is public domain information, which should be given to the Aam Admi, as he very correctly said. Um, comparative studies will be made. For example, in as he said, there are seven to eight corporators. My ward has six corporators. So, uh, or six constituencies and comparative studies will be made based on these affidavits. We will have them Xerox, we will have them distributed. We've got college students already um, involved in this process and they will be given to people so that they become informed voters on who they want to vote for based on the transparent affidavits that will be made available. Okay. Like I said, transparency is pre-election. We found out in 2006, I remember when we asked for an RTI about spending on a particular road. We were absolutely shocked to find, and this happens across the city. Sometimes one side of the road belongs to one corporator, the other side of the road belongs to another corporator. And if both corporators belong to the same political party, they both took credit for doing that road from their funds. Okay, so how transparent was that? So, post elections, that is when accountability comes in and I personally feel that is when we have to be very, very alert to the promises they made and whether they are going to be sticking to those promises. Will the corporators, I am asking all the political people who are here and who are not here also through the press, will your corporators be available to the Aam Admi? Will your corporators be accessible to us? And when I'm saying accessible and available, I don't mean in his air-conditioned office, sorry. Will he be available to us on the road? Um, I'm sorry if I disagree with Praja a little bit on this. Because you all rated the present corporators who are there based on uh, whether they asked questions on the floor of the house or not. I wish we had also asked whether they were accessible or available to us or not. Um, no, because then the rating of some corporators would have been very different, sir. I'm sorry, I just disagree with you, okay? Uh, I think I'm entitled to that, okay? Uh, yes. So, the next thing is, will, will this same corporator be agreeable to a third party audit? If we want to find out, will he be available for a third party audit? And for this, I am appealing to all citizens across the city. Please become the watchdog of your corporator. In fact, I'll go one step further. I'm sorry if I'm crude, be the bloodhound of your corporator. 